a lot has changed in the past few years in filmmaking. And I'm not just talking about the technology where it feels like every camera now is 4K 120. What I'm talking about is how you get work, how you keep it, and how you're able to make a living as a filmmaker or videographer. I know since I started, things have changed drastically. So I wanna go over a few points of what we have been learning as a team. So let's talk about these insights today, about how you can get more work and keep it. Let's jump right into this. The first thing that has changed with filmmaking is that clients aren't looking for videographers. What I mean is they're not just looking for people to come and shoot one video. These are the old days where people would pay a lot of money for you to create one asset for them. They're now looking for packages, whether they know it or not. I get a lot of people ask me, how do I get to a branded documentary? How do I get paid to shoot an actual film for a brand? Let me put it this way. There is so much video content out there these days that brands really don't get much value out of just a single film anymore. What you need to do is be able to bring them multiple assets. This includes photography, Instagram reels, longer form interviews, including testimonials, and then also just straight advertising. When I did my film Trails of Dust, to be honest, DJI did not really care all that much about the film. They were excited that I was making one, but what they were really paying for and what was in the contract was this finished YouTube video, these five reels, and a crap ton of photography. Now those last three things I'm kind of less interested in making, but I will work on those and I will outsource that work. That's the key, because I'm not that great at reels, so I get other people to help me with them, because I know my strength is making the film. So for you, when you're approaching a client, don't just come with a video idea. Come with a package. Everybody loves a package. Which leads me to my second point. You are not pitching videos. You are pitching solutions. It's really easy as a videographer to think about your skill as the asset that you're bringing. But that's not really the case these days. Over the past 10 years, Every piece of technology from your phone to the cameras has become so much cheaper and so much more accessible. What they're looking for is solutions. When you are approaching a brand, don't talk about the video content, talk about what it can do for their brand. So for example, there's a fitness influencer we've worked with in the past, Greg O'Gallagher. When my business partner Mike approached him, he didn't just say, hey, we can make some cool videos for you. He talked about the solution, about how he could separate Greg from the other fitness businesses online. And what none of them were doing was these more advanced, elaborate, cinematic style videos. But along with that, we brought a package. Everybody loves a package. We gave Greg photos, we gave him reels, we even created all the assets for his website, for his apps, and for his clothing brand. There was a package involved, but what we were able to pitch him and get him on board for these more, you know, to use the overused term, wait for it, cinematic videos that we made for him, was a solution, which was, this is how we're gonna separate. The fitness space is over flooded with too many videos and too many people doing TikTok style stuff. How can you be different? Well, we have the solution. Oh, hi, I'm just uh, running my own business. And speaking of running your own business, it's challenging. Just all the nitty gritty stuff from signing contracts, managing assets, getting stuff on the Instagram. There are so many moving parts. We run a team, Art of Documentary. It's been really easy for us to lose track with just the sheer amount of content that we've been putting out. There's a risk of misplacing files and missing deadlines. Now talking about organization, I've actually counted it up and for over 15 years now, I've been using Dropbox to manage my assets. This is going back to 2009 when I was a sole proprietor all the way to now where I have six full-time team members and dozens of contractors working with us. And what's very exciting recently is that Dropbox has released Dropbox Business and Business Plus which are total game changers for us filmmakers, no matter the size of team. And beyond just the storage that Dropbox has that I've come to love, one of my favorite capabilities within the plan is replay. I use this just about every day with my team and it's one of the easiest ways to give time stamped feedback with markups and comments between me, my team and our clients. We also do a ton of big shoots for AOD, our documentary academy. This means that we're not only having to work with deal memos for everyone on set, but we also have talent releases, which means a ton of paperwork. But Dropbox has solved this with e-signatures. It's sped up our workflow dramatically. <laughs> you can now request, sign and send e-signatures all from your phone, which gets us away from people having to use paper because we love treats. Truly, I, I, I just cannot imagine running my business without Dropbox. It's where I back up 
all of my projects. It's the lifeblood of our assets. It's the central station of all our content. If it went away, I don't know what I would do. Besides owning a camera, Dropbox has been part of my filmmaking journey the longest. So if you want more information about Dropbox Business and Business Plus, go check the description below. Dropbox has been part of my career for a very long time and perhaps it can be part of yours as well. Excuse me, I have a business to run. Another quick point is that you aren't just a videographer, you are the media department for these companies. Don't treat this as a one-off project. Look at it as that you are partnering with them and you're inserting yourself into their team. Make it easy for the client to want to hire you again. We teach this all the time in our Accelerator program. We've helped over 60 students, on average, make over six figures by pitching retainer clients. That is the key. You're not a one-off videographer. You are these clients' video department. What's happened these days, too, is that things are oversaturated. Even the YouTube space, I see a lot of people creating YouTube channels. And just by copying your competition is not enough. You have to find your niche. This is absolutely imperative. I can't stress this enough. Gone are the days of just being the do-it-all videographer. You need to know what separates you. For me, when I started off my directing career, I said I was a documentary style sports commercial director. And I have evolved. This is the great thing with your niche, is it can change over time. I didn't want to get pigeonholed in that for too long, so I made the pivot to YouTube and started focusing on my long-form films. But you have to have a specific style. For me, it's that dark, moody, handheld filmmaking. That's what separates me from some other filmmakers. Although, to be honest, a lot of people are doing that now. So for me, I'm now exploring new opportunities and new styles of shooting that will help me still have my niche. I'll tell you this, a narrower focus in your style and in your career will actually open up more doors because you, Mordor, will it open up Mordor? It's just in New Zealand, kind of felt like Mordor. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Finding that focus will connect you with the clients who want that work. You will become ubiquitous with that style and that's what you want. If you're feeling stressed out from this video, I just want to remind you, the question you have to keep asking yourself when you're pitching or when you're working or if you're creating a YouTube channel or any content of media, what problem is this solving? You are a solution maker. The secondary job you have is a videographer. Reframe your mind. If you're creating a YouTube channel, there's so many out there, ask yourself, what problem am I solving for people? But know this, if you haven't solved the problem for yourself ever, it'll be a difficult problem to solve for others. So get out there and get experience and you'll begin to learn where your niche is. The last few quick points are get used to making pitch packages. He loves a package. We talk about this extensively in Art of Documentary and I'm constantly showing my pitch packages and how I built them and how to build yours. And I even give out templates if you're one of our students. But this is now a de facto, it's a default. Clients don't just expect a page with words in it or a text message, they need to see your vision. So get used to putting that in. When I did the DJI project, I made a pitch package. In fact, pretty much every project I do, even if the client hasn't asked for one, I build one because it helps me focus my thoughts down, build my visual style, and what I'm actually trying to achieve. I actually found recently the pitch package for my ASD band movie. It was cool to see that the way the film turned out was actually my original intent that I brought to the client. They had never asked one, but when I brought to them, they were totally on board for the vision, and it really helped us get momentum right out of the gate. My last two points is your competition's using AI. As much as I hate AI, Who's that talking? there is ways that it is speeding up our editing now. If you're not using text-based editing, you have to get into this. This is one way to improve your workflow. I have videos on this channel about that and how you can speed it up, but you need to start embracing AI. I wouldn't recommend writing scripts with ChatGPT, but sometimes when I even need to come up with a new YouTube title, I'll start with something like ChatGPT. Even in Adobe now, they have ways to help you speed up your voiceovers and videos just like this, where it takes out all your ums and uhs and pauses so that you have a quicker, cleaner, more faster, efficient timeline to work with. Ultimately, when I started realizing that I was not just a single video filmmaker, as in that I would approach one client, make a bunch of money off one video, and then go find another client. It's when I started seeing them as reoccurring businesses. I found companies that didn't have an in-house videographer, and I, in a sort of a way, became a part-time one for them. In fact, sometimes you can get find just one company and get them on the retainer, and this is how you can make a healthy living and still have time to shoot your passion projects. We've been doing this for dozens and dozens of students, like I said, in the AOD Accelerator program. This is an invite-only program that we have within AOD for AOD filmmakers. If you want more 
more information like that. If you're part of Art of Documentary, let us know. We also are opening the doors this upcoming April for Art of Documentary. That's our filmmaking academy. We've been seeing so many people. Oh, I gotta wait for the, they found the criminal. Oh, nope, he got away. He's running. Go get him, boy. So I've completely lost my train of thought, but uh, thank you. And I uh, hate goodbyes. You made it this far, leave. Gotta figure out a good emoji. Hmm. You made it this far, leave the Nigerian flag. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to Nigeria soon. <laughs> oh, hopefully, my visa gets approved. So leave the Nigerian flag. All right, bye.